Hi, pencil coders. Today, we're going to take a look at the difference between for loops, while loops, and forever loops in pencil code. Now, if you haven't already watched the videos on for loops, I suggest that you do that now because this video will assume that you already understand the basics of for loops. So let's get started by just starting a new program. So like I said, we're going to be using a for loop and what we're going to make is a circle of beads or dots. So we'll get our for loop going. We'll do 12 iterations. We're going to start by drawing a green dot in each iteration. And then we're going to have the turtle move forward to draw a new dot. And to make a circle, we're going to have him do uh, a slight right turn at each of these iterations. So if we see what this does, as you can see, the turtle is starting to draw a ring of beads. And we only had to specify the three commands to make this happen. Uh, we only had to specify them one time because they're happening 12 times inside the body of the for loop. So this guy's almost done. And there you have it, our finished product. So the next thing we're going to look at is a while loop. Whereas a for loop is used to do something a set number of times, in this case 12 times, a while loop will keep looping until a condition is no longer satisfied. Now that might sound complicated, but it won't feel complicated once we see it in action. So we're going to do the same thing, but in a while loop. So we'll keep our for loop here for reference just for now. So we have a while loop and it's going to compare a condition. So we have two blanks, um, first blank less than second blank. So actually what we're going to have to do here is we're going to have to define a variable first. So we'll set the variable called X equal to zero. And then what we can do is we can check while x is less than 12, we're going to do something. And what we're going to do is going to be the exact same thing. So let's just take our body of the for loop and put it into the while loop. Great, so we don't need this for loop anymore. But with the while loop, we're going to have to do one extra step. And this is because we've set x to zero and if we didn't do anything else, x would always be 0, and this condition, x less than 12, will always be true. So we're going to increase x within the body of the while loop. So every iteration, x will become 1 larger than it was last time. So eventually, we'll count up to 12. So if we run this, we're going to see that it does the exact same thing as the previous for loop that we had. If you're not sure why these two loops are equivalent, go back in the video, watch the for loop section again, and then compare it with the while loop description so that you can understand why these two loops do the same thing. Okay, well I'm convinced that this turtle is going to do the same thing that we had him do last time, and now he's done, so there we go. So you might be asking, if these two loops are doing the same thing, why would you have the option to use both of them? In fact, the for loop was a lot simpler because we didn't have to specify an x variable, we didn't have to raise its value by one in every iteration, so the for loop seems like the clear winner. But the while loop can do a few things that a for loop is not as good at doing. For instance, whenever this condition is something uh, user-generated, Maybe we want to keep the turtle doing something until the user enters a particular command. So let's see what that would look like. So if we get rid of this x and we're going to get rid of this comparison, our new comparison is going to be while our turtle does not touch uh, the last mouse position. And you see when we type that in, uh, this automatically gets uh, created into the block format. Um, we're going to 
we can keep drawing dots. We can keep going forward. Uh, I'll have him just draw a square. So at each uh, iteration, we're going to make a 90 degree turn. So this will make him draw a square. We've gotten rid of our x variable, so we definitely don't need this. Uh, however, there is another uh, consideration we have to take in this while loop because if we just run the program like this, the computer's gonna go crazy with this while loop. It's gonna keep running the while loop over and over and it's never gonna tell the turtle to actually animate. So we do have to include an await command at the end. Uh, and it, we're not gonna wait on a read from the user. We're gonna wait on uh, a done defer. So basically, all you need to know is await done defer is going to say at the end of this iteration, turtle, do your thing, and then we'll come back to the loop. So what this loop is going to do is the turtle is going to keep moving in a square over and over. We'll go ahead and have him run that. So he's going to keep going until he runs into a mouse uh, that the user is inputting. Now. Another thing to note is he's only going to stop whenever the mouse is at the corner because he's not checking the condition while he's moving. He's only checking if he needs to do another iteration. So if we hold the mouse right here, he's going to pass it, but he's not going to stop. But what we can do is if we put the mouse on a dot, whenever he gets there and he turns around, he's going to check the condition of the while loop and since the condition is not true, meaning he is touching the last mouse position, then the while loop will stop executing and we won't iterate on the while loop anymore. And as you can see, the turtle has stopped at the mouse on this corner. So that's just some benefit of the while loop over a for loop. Now there's one more loop that we're going to look at. And this is a really great loop in my opinion when using it in pencil code. And it's the forever loop. If you just want to have an animation that goes on and on and on, it's like a while loop where this condition is never false. So we're just going to keep going and going and going and the turtle's going to keep doing his thing until you stop the program. So again, we can get rid of this while loop for now. We're going to be using a forever loop. Uh, let's do something similar. We'll do another dot. But just to show off the the interesting part of a forever loop, we're not going to tell it to do green every time like we've been doing. We're actually going to do something fun. We're going to give it a random color. So we'll set a random color and we'll do the same size of uh, a dot of size 50 as we have been doing. Uh, but we still need to uh, give him a little more movement. So we'll tell him to go forward by 100 and we'll do the slight right turn of 30 again. And this is all we need to make a pretty interesting program. The turtle is going to keep going in the same ring that we've been telling him, but uh, each dot is a random color, and once he gets to the starting point, he's not going to stop. He just keeps going around updating the circles. So now we've seen three kinds of loops, the for loop, the while loop, and the forever loop. Again, as a repeat of the lesson, the for loop is great whenever you have a set number of iterations that you want to perform. If you know you want to do something 12 times, the for loop is a great way to get that done. A while loop can do the same thing as the for loop, but it can also, uh, it can also wait on other conditions like user input and things like that that are not easily expressed in a for loop. And then finally we saw the forever loop. And this loop will keep going. It makes your turtle animate forever until we hit this stop button here to stop the program. And if you just wanted to have a demo where the turtle just keeps doing his thing over and over and over, then the forever loop is the way to go.